Hi, um, I've been asked if I'll show um, how I prepare a piece of hardboard. I'm doing this on the floor because my, my table is covered in the usual clutter. I'll show you that in a minute. So a piece of hardboard, this came from someone's floor. It's a thin, thin piece of uh, building material. You can, it's used mostly for lining floorboards before putting uh, carpet or different types of flooring on top of a smooth surface. Uh, very useful for painting. And one of the great artists, my great hero, Edward Seago, used hardboard for most of his great oil paintings in the 50s and 60s. So I'm going to always have a frame ready for a painting. So in other words, cut your board to a painting. Don't do it the other way around. So I've got a gallery frame here. Uh, lovely frame. And it's 16 by 12 inches. So I'm going to cut a 16 by 12 inch board. So all you need for that is a, is a measure. Put a couple of marks. I'm, I'm going to do the 16 first. So just I did spend some years as a draftsman, so I, I'm quite good at doing, doing that. Oh, excuse me, I need a straight edge. But be very, very careful when you do this. Now, this hardboard is, um, is quite soft, and being soft, it roughs up nice and rough. Right, so a craft knife, very sharp and gently keep your fingers out of the way. You'll note there, there's a line scratched into the metal. It's where the knife slipped and it went right over my thumb. So be careful, make sure if the knife slips, your fingers aren't in the way of it. Start off gently, score a line. That will give your, your blade something to cut into and guide. It's thin enough and soft enough to do that with. I'll hoover up afterwards. Right, so that's a 16 inch, 16. We'll now cut the, uh, the 12. Uh, that's all. Mark 12. I hope you can see this. I'm on my knees. Mark there. And we'll do the same again. Get the uh, craft knife. Stanley, heavy duty blade, and gently score the line. That will give your blade a groove. See, that's how easy it is to, to do. To go wrong with, I mean. Okay. Put that aside. Now, I'll uh, put my knife back into its sheet and now I'll go and get the rough paper. This is this is from a, a, a strip of belt sanding paper. It's very very rough. Let's oops. It's a rough. It's in a block. Like that. I'm looking at the camera to see what I'm showing you. Right now we just give that a nice throw that in the way. I do apologise for the uh, noise made by my camera when I'm using the uh, hair dryer. I didn't know there was a problem. So I'll uh, give warning in the future if I remember. I, can't, I don't know how to turn the mic down. So just take off. Notice I'm, I'm sanding the smooth side, not the rough side. You don't want that, it's too mechanical. And it would take a long time to fill that with, with loads of paint. So. Just rough it both ways. This will allow the PGA glue To soak into it, just shake that off all over the place. 
But as I say, I'll hoover. Now I'll take you around to my table, which is covered. You'll have to excuse the the jerkiness of all this because I'm not used to it. Right, let's show you show you my table. There, let's have a look. There's uh, coming around to it. There's my stack of watercolour demos for the last 14 months. Well, some of them anyway. Some, most, most of them. Some are in a gallery, not doing very well. Some I've got rid of, and some I've painted over in acrylics. So there's my bit of board, all nicely smoothed. Oh, not smooth, but roughed up. By roughing the surface, it opens up all the fibres, and it makes it a bit absorbent. Now, this is the varnish I'm using. Quick drying varnish, Ron Seal, matte. I bought it for uh, painting over the, the woodwork in my, my shower room. But I've got some in, the, in this container, it's an old Liquitex gloss varnish. This was the artist quality. And I put, it, I put some in here. So I just... Whoop, That's it. Just squirt some out. It's quite thin. You don't want too much on. And then just paint it in. It'll seal the surface, but because it's wet at the moment, it, it tends to raise up the fibres and give a bit of tooth. That's what you want, a bit of tooth. So that when you put your paint on, it doesn't slide. I don't know about a few bits on it. You can always rub them on afterwards. I usually do this on the easel. You can, of course, use uh, your acrylic paint, which, but it's a rather expensive way to, to seal the board. And because the hardboard has a uh, colour, it's a mid-tone and you can get your contrast right to start with. Now, I had a, a PM this morning of probably sent yesterday, about somebody who, who's, who loves the acrylics and is struggling with it. He, no matter what he does, he can't get them right. They start off okay and they go downhill. And he's done 30 of them. Well, I've done, I've done thousands. And sometimes I pull, pull one off. But don't think that I've got any greater ability or potential than you. I've just done a lot of it. And you have to do a lot of it to learn. I've done thousands of pictures, many of them failures. Right, that's that's good. Now, close the lid of that. Put my uh, brush in the uh, water, keep it nice and soft. I'll show you another type of material that you can use. But you really need to look out for the softer versions, because some of these are quite hard. This is MDF. Uh, can you see that? It's, this is a quarter of an inch thick, six millimetres. It, it, you can get it all, all thicknesses and it's very popular with oil painting, but it makes it very heavy on the wall with a frame. That's why that hardboard. But you can rough, the, the, rough it up just the same. It's very, very durable provided it doesn't get wet. But you can seal both sides of this with acrylic. This acrylic varnish is very cheap so that the other side is, is impervious to water as well. Um, the other thing you can do, if you wish, is to use plaster of Paris mixed in with your PVA glue, or your varnish, it's PVA glue, it's all plastic, but it's, it's water soluble when it's, when it's liquid, um, is to use uh, this with uh, either Liquitex or a version of texture paste, Spectrum do a very good one, um, you got, I mix my acrylic paints with this sometimes just to thicken them up, give a bit of body. Or you can mix plaster of Paris like a gesso. Uh, it does tend to coagulate a bit, uh, which is not, not so good. Right, that's that. While you're here, I'll, I'll give you a little view around the mess that I, I work in. Let's so just put that there so I can see what I'm showing you. 
right there's my one of my windows over the uh, my work table got drawers and things and easels and stuff all everywhere my my smock covering up loads of spare rag you need linen rag not nylon there's my studio easel propped up in the corner the paintings on the wall yeah. that's where we've uh, done the painting of the board there's that acrylic on, uh, in the far distance about six feet away of the little acrylic I did a couple of days ago there's my stay wet palette or one of them uh, another table easel mounts all sorts and I'll show you uh, um, this one matter if you can see it there I'll get it out. It's, it's slipped in the frame, and that's why I took it down. I haven't put it back. It's a caricature of me for my 60th birthday that a friend did, a very, very good artist. I'll have to put it, I'll have to sort this out. But there I was. We're, we're in my pipe smoking days. Yeah. With a glass of wine in one hand, brush in the other, sitting on my stool, and that is a very, very good caricature by my friend Mary Nugent, and she did that, that in 2005. So there we are, there's uh, my bookshelf. Whoops, the, well, we'll do the ironing up here as well and the airing of the clothes. So that's, that's a my bookcase with loads of art books in. It's an old frame that was used for a mirror, which I'm going to get, I'm going to cut down. I have a television in the corner, which I don't use. It's only there because of, I'm loath to throw it away. It's the old analog with a free view box. So that's that's it. Uh, that's my studio. Oh, well, I'll just show you underneath it's the work table there. Uh, if you can see uh, paintings under the table, There's about a hundred or so paintings under there. And this is my loft conversion, which we had done about 20 years ago. And I've got under Eve's story, so I've got paintings stuff in that cupboard over that door over there behind there probably another hundred paintings or so canvases i really need to have a good burn up because they're not going to go anywhere i've had them too long they're not some of them are good some of them are rubbish but we all do it okay well if you've got any questions just pm me and i'll give you any further answers but hardboard is very good for oil painting and and um acrylic and also uh, you can use acrylic varnish or acrylic glue, PVA glue, or acrylic primer, good quality acrylic, acrylic wood primer for priming both for oil and acrylic. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope that it gives you some sort of enlightenment to how I do it. Goodbye.